Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining us this morning on this webinar. Caribbean Export Development Agency is pleased to partner with the ITC, the, the International Trade Center, under the United Kingdom Trade Partnerships Program to deliver today's webinar on trade intelligence tools as a key to SME's export success. My name is Natasha Edwin Walcott, and I am the Senior Advisor for Competitiveness and Export Promotion here at Caribbean Export, and I will be your moderator today. We have scheduled three sessions this month to target firms producing or manufacturing natural products, alcoholic beverages, as well as sauces and condiments, and we are extremely pleased by the high level of interest shown in today's event having re received well over 100 firms registered to take part. As an agency, we have recognized the importance of high quality, accurate and timely market information to aid in firms' decision-making. As most of you may be aware, Caribbean Export is the regional agency with a mandate to develop and increase exports from the Cariforum region and we have put significant technical and financial resources into developing the capacity of both firms and business support organizations in this regard through the 11th European Development Fund Regional Private Sector Development Program. We look forward to hearing from the ITC team today on the pertinent sources of information which will help you to tap into new high potential markets by having a better understanding of the international demand for your products the export performance of your sector, the tariff and non-tariff barriers you are likely to face on entry, and much more. For those of you already exporting, we hope that this inspires you to get into new markets, particularly those in Europe and the United Kingdom. For those now looking for an opportunity, we hope that you will have a better idea of the issues which you should consider before you take that leap in order to be successful. With these few words, um, I will just give some housekeeping and then I will hand over to the ITC team. So today um, we will allow the team to make the presentation. And if you have any questions, I ask that you post them in the chat box below so that everybody will have a view of the question and the ITC, ITC team will do their very best to answer your question in the chat. So without further ado, I hand over to Pichaya, who is our facilitator today. She will introduce herself, the team, and of course, the overview of the presentation. Pichaya, over to you. Thank you very much, Natasha. Um, good morning, everyone. My name is Pichaya Sam Amond, and I am here today with my colleague from the International Trade Center, Han Narkard. Um, so we are very pleased to be welcoming you to this 90-minute webinars on ITC's market analysis tools and the role of threat intelligence in exporter success. Um, this activity is under the framework of the United Kingdom Trade Partnerships Program. Um, so as I, I will, after the opening remarks, what I will do is that I will discuss about the objective of this particular webinar. By the end of this webinar, the participants will gain better understanding about the UKTP projects, especially in the trade intelligence uh, component, the role of trade intelligence in the future of export success, because what we're trying to do right now is to provide you additional information to assist you in making decision uh, for your business, where to export, how to meet the market requirements, what are the future of my business in the next five years, what are the potential markets, and what market requirements I have to consider, what market requirements are actually um, going to come to light in the very near future so that you can stay on top and stay ahead of the any new changes or modifications to market requirements. Um, ITC tools allow you to assess uh, current demands, market requirements, and new prospect at the same time. And within this 90 minute, I would like to inform you before we go into the live demonstration is that it's just an appetizer for the upcoming activities that we will have within the region. So 
within these 90 minutes, we are really, really, really limited in terms of what features and functionality that we can present to you. So we only present part of the features and functionality that are available in our market analysis tools. Okay, we're just going to be showing you a case study on uh, today, which is the about the natural product. We're going to be talking about cocoa beans. Um, it's just an appetizer. So if you have any additional question, we remain at your entire disposal via email. You can always get in touch with us. We will give you an email address at the end of this um, webinar. But at the end of the day, I hope you walk away with the knowledge, with a, a foundation knowledge about the existence of these tools and the basic uh, features and functionality that you can use to do preliminary analysis uh, for your export. Okay. And any questions that you have, please submit them to the chat box. My colleague Hannah will be very happy to hear from you and uh, provide you with answers. And if she deems that some answers are useful for other participants, she will also inform me this and I will address those answers directly. So I ask you to please keep your microphone mute in order to avoid disturbing others and make use uh, as much as possible uh, on the chat box subject. Uh, please submit any question you may have. Okay, so a little bit about this project, this framework that we're trying to do right now. Um, the, the, uh, the project really aimed to increase the export flows from ACP country, Africa, Caribbean, and the Pacific country to United Kingdoms and Europe and create sustainable and inclusive uh, trade, meaning create more work for women and vulnerable uh, community, etc. And into one of the intervention is related directly to the trade and market intelligence in bringing more transparency into uh, information. So basically what we're trying to achieve is to make sure that the data or market information are readily, readily available for any business operator for them to consult, etc. And the data will be up to date. So we are also working with different countries to make sure that the data are available online, that, that the data are the latest available to help you make better trade related decision. Okay, so as I mentioned before, here are the outputs. Um, so the first one, we are going to um, strengthen the understanding of firms and institutions about how to use preferential trade agreements, trade intelligence, et cetera, and create a more transparent business environment. Because the more, if the business trans uh, environment is transparent, it's easier for trade to flow, to uh, investment to flow between countries. Of course, this is, the be this is beneficial for everyone involved. Now, what we believe is that trade intelligence um, and ITC's market analysis tool are a part of the SME export success. Because if you have the product and if you want to export, unless you know the market requirements, unless you know what are the attractive markets, you are the, the likelihood of you success, uh, succeeding in exporting will be much more much smaller if you have all the information in front of you. So that's why we are raising awareness about these tools. I um, First of all, I would like to mention that ITC's market analysis tools are 100% free for users in developing country. This means if you register for an account, you will have full access to everything, every single module, every single features and functionality. Whereas users in developed country, they have to pay for it. Everything are free for you. So please feel free to use them at your convenience. All the tools that I present today are 100% free of charge. Um, trade intelligence, business need them because they are essential to make strategic decision and to achieve additional exports to improve their performance in international market. But oftentimes what happened is that the scarcity of the available information uh, make it lit very, very difficult or almost impossible for them to access crucial data in a timely manner. So ITC responds to these needs with a suite of free accessible trade intelligence tool that uh, gives you information about international demands, that gives you information 
about market access condition, be it tariffs, rules of origin, non-tariff measures, export import requirements, or even information about potential partners, because we also have company contact information in our tools. More than 1 million company contract contact information in our tools so that you can reach out to them and offer your goods and services. So these are a completed circle to allow you to make actionable decisions. Um, here are just a screen capture about the first on the first page of the tools. For example, uh, we have today we're going to be talking about trade map, where we investigate the international demand, where we talk about um, part, uh, potential partners, and we also talk about export potential map, which um, allows you to see the projected demand for the next five years, so by 2024. The third tool that we will talk about is market access map, where you have information on tariffs, non-tariff measures, existing tariffs that will be applied to your product, existing non-tariff measures that will be applied to your product upon entering a market. And fourthly, we have EPING alert, which talks about the incoming market requirements, product requirements. So that allows you to adapt your production, et cetera, to meet the requirement. This means you're stay ahead of the game. This means that you will be able to continue to export to a particular market, even though the uh, requirements are constantly changing and you stay ahead of any incoming changes. So now I am going to embark on the, on, on the presentation of the tools. Um, the first things first, I would like to talk about harmonized system because this is the, really the foundation of any market analysis that will be done through ITC's tool. Okay, the harmonized system is internationally re um, standardized system of names and number to classify traded product. It existing 95 chapters starting with 01 until 99. Now, the more numbers are added to the code, the more details, and it becomes more specific as well. I, guess I will show you right here as an example of today. We have uh, for COCOA, COCOA, basically, we started at the chapter level. Chapter level 1.8 is for COCOA and COA, COCOA preparation. Now, as I mentioned before, the more digit I add to 1.8, uh, the more detail it will be, which means at, at HS4 digit level, 1801, we are only talking about cocoa beans. However, if you want to talk about cocoa butter, fat and oil, the headings become 1804. And if you want to talk about cocoa powder, which is a completely different product, is 1805. As you can see here, the more digit I add, at the beginning, it was 18. I talk about cocoa, cocoa preparation, everything that is related to the product. Then it become more specific, 1801, you're talking about the beans. 1804, you're talking about the cocoa butter. 1805, you're only talking about the powder without, any, without sugar or sweetening matter, okay? So when it reach HS6 with six digit, 1801100, you are only talking about cocoa bean, whole or broken, raw or roasted. This is the product that we'll be talking about today, okay? Six digit level, 180100. Just to give you information that if um, you go beyond that at HSC 8, 10, or 12 digit level, this is not internationally standardized anymore. It's the national tariff line and it's country specific. That means even for, um, for Barbados, the national tariff line for a specific product will be different from um, another country, for example, Peru, it will be different. The first six digit will remain the same. One eight zero one zero zero will be the same. And then Barbados can add one eight zero one zero zero six four, 
for example. And then Peru, it would be 1801-0099. So it's completely different, so it's not standardized. So if you ever need to do international market analysis, the most detailed level you can do it at is at HS six digit level, okay? So six digit level, this is the most detailed level to, to analyze international market, to be able to compare United States with France, to be able to compare Germany with Japan. The most detailed level is HS six digit level, okay? So I just want to make sure that we all understand that HS, the harmonized system product classification. Um, so next slide, I would like to put uh, set the stage for the presentation today. The presentation today will focus on 180100 cocoa beans, whole or broken, raw or roasted. Okay. And in 2019 alone, Cariform Nations exported a total of 247 million US dollars or 82,000 plus tons to countries around the world. This is a rebound from a drop in export uh, to 147 in 2017. So from 2017 until 2019, there's a huge growth in terms of export of this particular product. The top five carrying forum cocoa beans exporters are the following. Dominican Republic, Haiti, Grenada, Trinidad and Tobago, and Jamaica. So these are the top five carrying forum cocoa bean exporters. Where do I get this kind of information? I got this kind of information for an, from an ITC tool called TradeMap. Okay, and I am going to be showing you those tools right now. Okay. Here we go. What I am showing to you is ITC's, one of ITC's market analysis tool called TradeMap. This is a tool that gives you the international trade statistic for business development. Uh, we have the data from 220 countries and territories. This means we're talking about custom territories, for example, Hong Kong or Macau, will be separated from China mainland. Okay, we're talking about customs territories. That's why there are 220 countries and territories in trade map. The data are updated on a regular basis. For example, if you look at the China data right now, we have the data as recent as July 2020 already. So we work directly with the national Bureau of Statistics in different countries around the world and try to bring to you the latest available trade statistics. And most importantly, it's all free of charge, okay? So trade map covers all the internationally traded products, internationally traded goods, okay? Using the harmonized system that we discussed before. First things first, I logged into this account. I registered for an account and I logged in for the first time. So when I do so, I will be able to manage my own country groups and my own product groups. Because for example, if you work with specific group of products or work with only specific set of countries, you are able to just uh, filter it out and only see the information that is relevant to you, make your analysis faster. So I strongly encourage you to register for an account with um with itc's market analysis tool okay so next what i'm going to do, show you is the structure of this page um first of all i would like to show you the advanced search this is the search box where you can search the product so basically what happened is that if i type cocoa the system will automatically filter the relevant issues code all the codes that contain the word Cocoa. However, the disadvantage of this approach is that you cannot read the entire description of the code. When you cannot read the entire description, it is likely that you will make a mistake. And if you use the wrong code, your analysis will be entirely wrong. 
So I would recommend that you use the advanced search button, which brings you to another page. And then you type in the keyword and then in order to be able to see the entire description, as I will show you here, here it says that one eight one eight zero one one zero zero is cocoa bean whole or broken raw or roasted. This is good. This is quite short. However, you look at eighteen zero eight nine zero. The description is quite long, and there's no way that you can fit that into the search box before. So if, I, if this product were relevant to me, it's of very high importance that I am able to read the entire description. So for this demonstration, I would click on the code that I think fits the most my, my product, 180100. It brings me back to the home page. The second thing you need to do as well is to shoot the import or export direction. The first um search that i will do is that i want to show you where i got the information that i show you before when i talk about the caribbean Car cariforum top cocoa beans exporter i choose the trade flow direction i chose export i put already the product code and i'm talking about a region so the region cariforum currently does not exist in ITC country group by itself. I created it because I have an account. So as you can see here, I have all type of country group available for me. I can customize it myself. And one of the customization I made is to create a group that is called Cariforum. I click here, then the buttons become available and I click on trade indicators to be able to see some important trade statistics. First things first, you read the name of the table. List of exporters for the selected product, 1A0100, cocoa beans, whole or broken, raw or roasted. I am looking at the data that is aggregated for Cariforum region. You see from here that Dominican Republic is the biggest exporter of cocoa beans. And in 2019 alone, it exported 230 million US dollars worth of cocoa beans. Okay, so one thing that I would like to point out is that the value in trade map is in US dollars thousands. You have to add three more zeros to the number that you see right here. The reason why we do that is because if we add three more zeros, the table become extremely long and wide. So that's why all the values presented to you is actually in thousands. So you have to add three more zeros yourself. And as you can see here, that some numbers are black, some numbers are in yellow, uh, oranges, and some numbers are in purple, some number are in uh, red. So let me explain to you, the one in purple is aggregated data, okay? It's a mixed data between reported data and mirror statistic. So for some country, you see that Jamaica, the figures are in black here. That means that this is the data reported by Jamaican Bureau of Statistics is the what's reported to itc what's reported to the un contract we call this the direct data and then when the numbers are in yellow this means the data are mirror statistics mirror statistics are available when the data has not been submitted by the country to itc or un contract so what we do is that we use the data that has been reported by different country, as I told you, we cover a number of country, we cover hundreds of country. We use that number and constitute Dominican Republic's trade statistic. It's like standing in front of the mirror, okay? So you reflect what you have and, and show uh, the other country's trade statistic. This has happened with Dominican Republic, Haiti, Granada, Trinidad and Tobago. 
the, the numbers are based on the reported data by their partner country, okay? But I can say that mirror statistic is not 100% perfect. Even though it's not 100% perfect, it's still better than nothing, okay? So we are able to see a little bit the trade performance of the country on a specific product, et cetera. But it's not 100% correct because it's a reflection, okay? So for example, if the Dominican Republic sent their cocoa to Haiti, and Haiti is not a rep did not report the data either, so there's no way I will be able to see the trade between these two, these two non-reporting countries. So there might be some data missing, but for the reported country, such as Europe, the entire Europe, such as US, Canada, most of Asia, as they are reported, they are, recon they are used to reconstruct the missing data. So I hope this is clear for everyone. Now, um, I'm able to show you the data that I presented to you before about top five tariff forum cocoa beans exporter. Let me go back to home and search. Okay, so I will restart it from the very beginning. Imagine that I am myself a cocoa bean exporter from Trinidad and Tobago, okay? I would like to investigate what are the most attractive market for my product. So what things I do is I put the HS code because I'm already familiar with the code. I'm able to type directly the code 180100 cocoa beans, whole or broken, raw or roasted. In this one, in terms of country, I will leave it blank because I want to see the statistics from every country around the world. I want to have the global overview about the uh, imports of my product. I want to see all the markets. So I leave it blank and I click on trade indicators. Okay, so this is the list of importer of the selected product. You see here, these are the list of country who are importing cocoa beans. The list is quite long and you can even expand it to 300 countries per page. It's not a problem. You see that it's very, very long. The data is complete. Um, however, this particular table is being sorted by imported value right here. Okay, it's being sorted uh, by this particular column that is in yellow. So what you see right here is that in 2019, the total import of cocoa beans are 9.6 billion US dollars or 3.9 million tons. Okay, for, for the quantity, you do not have to add three more zeros. And the over uh, at the world level, the annual growth in value of cocoa bean over the last five years has decreased by 2%, negative two. And the annual growth in quantity is 7%. So this means that even though the annual growth in value is less, the annual growth in volume is there. There's still, uh, there's still increasing demand in terms of cocoa beans. However, the, the difference between the growth in value and growth in quantity, when it goes in different direction, as you can see here that the growth in value is less than the growth than volume, it means that the product has, the unit value, the average unit value of the product has declined over time, over the last five years. This is the trend. Uh, the overall ten, the trend at the world level. So we present to you the data for all these countries, but at the same time, we also calculated the data at the world's level. And back to this particular column that I might have missed before, the unit value. So the unit value is just basically value divided by volume right here. You get the average unit value. Okay, this is uh, across all different types of cocoa beans, uh, whether or not it is a certified organic 
organic uh, cocoa beans or not? Is it what is the size of the cocoa beans, etc.? Is it single origin? Is it specialty cocoa beans? It's all across different types, different packaging, different season. Um, so, but the average unit value per ton at the world level is 2,430 um, US dollars. This is the world's average. Okay, and then you will see that from each from each country, there's an average for those country as well, and you are able to benchmark whether for that particular importing market, uh, the average unit value is higher or lower than the world's average. When you in, if it's a higher, you will be able to investigate. For example, if you're a specialty shop, uh, cocoa exporter, maybe this is the market that is have higher potential, more attractive for you because they seem to be able to import the product that of potentially higher quality product, etc. So you are able to use this kind of proxy to understand the market better. Um, I would also like to mention that ITC's market analysis tool is an excellent tool to do market analysis and research, but it's just the first step because it's all quantitative. What we're giving you right here, you see all these numbers, these are facts, okay? These are facts, these are numbers that are reported by the country. What we don't have, and that you would have to do another time independently, is about qualitative data. What do you know about the market? For example, I can tell you that over the last year in Europe, there has been a trend of specialty cocoa beans, okay? They prefer single origin cocoa, etc. okay? So there are different things. This kind of preferences is qualitative. It's not available in ITC's market analysis tool, but what we present to you here is something that is extremely comprehensive and based on facts. It's very data-driven, it's evidence-based. So this is uh, what I'm presenting to you right here. Um, the first line you see that is at the world level, and then you break it down to all this country. You see that the Netherlands is the world's biggest importer of cocoa beans. In 2019, Netherlands imported 2.5 billion US dollars worth of cocoa beans, or 1. 1.08 million tons, okay? On average, um, it pays a little less than the world's average, okay? Now, in terms of the growth, the growth is higher than that of the world's average. So that means that the Netherlands market is growing faster than the world's average. It is becoming a more important um, buyer in the world, even though you can see here that Netherlands market share is already 26%. But because of such dynamic growth, higher growth than the world's average, it is become even more important market for cocoa beans. And even in terms of quantity, it's also growing faster than the world. So Netherlands is indeed a very important market um, in the world for cocoa beans. Now, you have to compare this role, the annual growth in value with the annual over the last two years with the last five years. The reason why we do this side by side is to allow you to see whether or not the, the growth rate for five years and two years, are they consistent? Because there could be in completely the opposite direction, as you can see here, Indonesia over the last five years, 40%, but over the last two years is 3%. So already uh, it shows a small decline now from the previous for the longer period, but still a growth. So it's in consistent that it's in a positive way, but there's also a significant drop from five years to two years. Another one is, for example, United Kingdom, the growth over the last five years is 17%, much higher than the world's average of negative two. The growth in quantity 23 comparing to seven of the world's average. So it's a growing market when you look at the five years perspective. However, over the last two years, there has been some contraction, then the growth rate is at negative 6%. So when it's a stark contrast between 17 and negative 6, this warrant additional
Okay, it warrants ad additional uh, research into uh, why this kind of um, difference happened, why this drop happened, for example. Okay, so um, I continue to the next uh, column, which is the share in the world's import. You see that Netherlands, uh, Germany, United States of America, they all have significant market share but so does other countries such as malaysia and belgium so basically share in the world's import is um the share of the value expressed in percentage now the next column is the average distance of supplying country it means that on average for any countries around the world the cocoa bean travel approximately 6771 kilometers to get to the market, okay? So that means uh, the imports of cocoa beans is often time from the country that is far away from the uh, uh, processing hubs, etc. As you can see here, Netherlands, the majority of their imports uh, of the cocoa beans come from countries that are approximately 5,456 kilometers away from them. So the major that means majority probably located in Africa, Western Africa in particular. Um, this is the same for Germany, but if you look at Malaysia, the average distance is 10,964 kilometers away. So they are used to buying from country that located more than 10,000 kilometers away. This is just an indicative on whether or not a country is used to buying from international market or simply from a regional market, okay? So it's just an indicative of that. It doesn't mean that if your country located further away than what's in indicated here that you cannot export to that market. It just means that they are used to, the majority of their imports actually come from around within that uh, that indicated distance okay so based on what i have shown you here you see that the netherlands germany united states malaysia belgium indonesia france etc these are all big and important markets for cocoa beans now what happened is that i will pick one market that i think is an attractive market for me um, so basically, for every exporter, there are different reasons why you export, why you choose to export to a certain market. Some export to the Netherlands because, look, Netherlands is the most important uh, buyers of uh, cocoa beans, okay? They have the biggest processing hubs in the world. They have 26% market share. More than a quarter of the world's cocoa bean goes there. So I'm just going to export to Netherlands. Not a problem, you can do that. Look, I'm going to export to uh, Malaysia because the growth uh, over the last year has been really good and positive because the last five years is 6%, the last two years is 5%. It's a consistent, um, consistently growing market. I want to go to Malaysia. Also not a problem. And another person might say, look, I want to export to France because it seems that France unit average unit value is higher than the world's average. So since I grow specialty fine organic chocolate uh, cocoa beans, I would like to export to France because they seem to have the demand for my product. Not a problem. Use facts to make decision. This is fine by me. And today for the sake of demonstration, I am going to be choosing Belgium. Okay, over the last five years, this, the growth seems to be negative, negative 8%. And then the growth in terms of uh, quantity is 0%. However, um, I'm interested in Belgium because I can see that the growth over the last two years, actually 21%, which is way higher than the world's average of 0%. So I'm going to choose Belgium because I see that this is a market that will, that is rebounding. And it's very important for me to go to look ahead and try to tap into the market that is growing. Okay, not a problem. What I do is that I click on Belgium. Once I click on Belgium, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to read the title. And these are the list of supplying market for the product by Belgium. 
So these are the suppliers of cocoa beans to Belgium. Okay. And um, so what I see right here is that I see my competitors. I am an exporter from Trinidad and Tobago. Okay. And I want to export to Belgium, but and these are all the countries that are currently providing uh, cocoa beans to Belgium. These are all the country, etc. So if if I expand it to 300 per page, okay, these are all my competitor. I want to find my country. Ah, finally, I saw. I can see my country's name. I see Trinidad and Tobago right here. And I see that is 28, which actually means 28,000 US dollars. So that means in 2019, Belgium imported 28,000 US dollars worth of cocoa beans from Trinidad and Tobago, which uh, translate to three tons in total. The average unit value is 9,000. $333 uh, per ton. So obviously this is clear. If the country's average unit value on top right here is 2,562. But for my country, they are paying 9,333. It must be because there is something special about Trinidad and Tobago cocoa beans, right? It must be about whether it's a certified organic, it's a fine cocoa uh, variation, whether it's a, a single origin uh, cocoa, etc. And look at the growth rate over the last five years, 48%. And then growth rate in value 48, growth rate in quantity 32%. So Trinidad and Tobago is indeed gaining market in Belgium, but it's still quite a long way to go to compare with other important um, suppliers. We could see that Trinidad and Tobago probably have a niche buyer in Belgium itself uh, who are buying a small amount of uh, high quality cocoa beans to make a specialty chocolate later. So this is a very much the possibility that we can see right here. We see the trend that over the last five years, the import from Trinidad and Tobago by Belgium has grown spectacularly. So we see our country's performance. Now let's have a look at our competitors. So these are all our competitor, okay? The biggest supplier to Belgium is actually Côte d'Ivoire. And as you can see here, last year, the Belgium imported 383 million US dollars worth of cocoa beans from Côte d'Ivoire. 53% of the imports were from Côte d'Ivoire. So Côte d'Ivoire is producing a massive amount and exporting massive amounts of cocoa beans to Belgium and other European countries. So, may, but when you look at the average unit value, you see, you can clearly see that it's not the same chocolate or it's not the same cocoa beans as the one imported from Trinidad and Tobago or other country with extremely high average unit value. Okay, Trinidad and Tobago right here. Uh, you have also from Cuba, which is much higher, 4,100, etc. So. Unit value is indeed served to tell you a little bit about the market, but not everything, but it's quite useful. And you can see that over the last five years, Côte d'Ivoire has negative 10 in terms of growth in value and negative one in terms of growth in volume. But it bounced back over the last two years, okay? And if I were to analyze this, what who do I think is the most um, rising competitor for uh, the cocoa market in Belgium is actually probably the country whose growth rate is higher than Belgium's growth import growth rate. So basically Nigeria, whose rate is 30 versus negative eight is higher. So it's becoming more important, it's gaining market share. Another country is United Kingdom to um, Belgium, 29%. Uh, another country, Spain, etc. So basically, these are 
uh, the European country who re-exported the imported cocoa beans to Belgium for processing, for confectionery, etc., for production of Belgium chocolate. Okay. Also, Uganda is also gaining ground in Belgian market last five years, 32% um, in terms of value, 54% in terms of volume, and 93% uh, over the last two years. So I am able to assess the level of competition through trade map as well. Now, um, the next step that I'm going to do, first of all, I just want to remind you that we have already looked at attractive markets. We selected the most attractive market for me, which is Belgium. Second of all, I have a look at my country's performance in the target market. I saw that Trinidad Tobago, even though ex uh, even though it's a small amount of import from Trinidad and Tobago by Belgium, but it's a growing import. Thirdly, I saw the competitor in Belgium market. And now next thing I'm going to do is I want to find the potential partner in a target market. And what I'm going to do is you see this button right here called company. Um, I click on the company. Treadmap also provides you the company contact information. More than 133 countries, 1 million company contacts that are available in Treadmap for all types of product. Um, for me, I'm an exporter of cocoa, cocoa beans. So the category that interests me is here, cocoa and chocolate product. You see right here. In this particular page, we source the company contact information from Compass, two companies in total. One is Compass. Second of all is Dun & Bradstreet. So we source this data from two different companies. We do not collect this data ourselves, but we make this data publicly free for all users in developing country. Um, this does not mean that in Belgium, there are only 28 companies who import cocoa bean. There are more, but they're just not on the list because what happened is that you need to register with Compass in order to appear on trade maps, uh, company contact information, okay? So it's not exhaustive list. This is the only the company who declare themselves to Compass. And every year, uh, on the annual basis, Compass will call this company to check if they're still in business. They will check if the, comp if the contact information is still correct, etc. So for example, I'm interested in this company. Every year, Compass will come in and call this company and ask them if all this information is still up to date. The company will also voluntarily tell you about the, their turnover. So for example, this particular company said that in 2019, their uh, turnover was 36 million euros, okay? This is the information that they told Compass is voluntary basis. And the number of employee, yes, I hire between 50 and 99 people in total. What do I import and export? These are the list of the, pro this, the product that this company import or export. I representing import, E representing export. So if I have a look at Cocoa, which is our product right here, this company, Amil in Belgium, in a city called Rosaire, um, do the import and export of this particular product. I could easily just pick up my phone and call them or go to their website and offer my services. So in a way, it comes to the conclusion, it's come to a full circle. I found my attractive market, I see my competitors, and I find my partner within one tool. So this is what you can do with TradeMap. Now, um, I would take the question. I think someone we have already submitted the question to the chat box and Hannah have replied to some of them. There is a question about, are there any export opportunity for cocoa value added product like skincare product? Okay, so um, according to my understanding in Europe, there are a few sectors who do import uh, chocolate, okay? First of all, it's confectionery. So basically they use cocoa beans to do um, chocolate bars. They do use cocoa beans to do candy bars, etc. Or food, 
So it becomes a part of the food preparation. The third one is cosmetic and fourth is pharmaceutical. So indeed, there is an opportunity to for cocoa beans in the cosmetic and pharmaceutical sector. So the, if but this information is not available in trade map. This is based on your market research, qualitative market research. You will see that since cocoa beans is such a transport transformable and uh, polyvalent product that can be transformed into other additional va value added product. Yes, I to answer your question. Yes, there's op export opportunities for cocoa beans as a skincare ingredient. This is for sure, or skincare product. But if you look for the trade statistic for skincare or cosmetic product, it, we will not find it in 180100. You have to find it in another issues code. Right now, we're talking about exporting of cocoa beans. So that means you can sell it to confectionery sector, you can sell it to food sector, you can sell it to cosmetic sector, you can sell it to pharmaceutical sector. What they do with your beans, you don't care. But indeed, there are opportunity in the cosmetic sector. Okay. Um, and don't forget that you have the opportunity to submit any kind of question, and we'll try to answer um, as much as possible. So I finish now with trade map, and I'm going to go to the second tool, which is the export potential map. The difference between trade map and export potential map is one thing. Trade map talks about the trade that already took place because even with the la latest trade statistic is still from July 2020, which is two months ago. Okay, it's very robust, it's very up to date, but it talks about trade that took place already, the trend that took place already. Now we have another tool called export potential map. This is a forward looking tool, okay? It's a very detailed, robust, and geared to it, sustainable development. So the data that you will find in export potential map right here that I show on your screen is the potential by 2024 in the next five years. This is also export opportunity or potential uh, that, that we have already uh, considered the impact of COVID-19. I will explain how we do that. So we do that because export potential map composed of three main ingredients, okay? First ingredient is the supply, second is demand, third is the ease of doing business, so ease of trade. Now, um, in terms of the supply, we took the projected GDP that was calculated by the World Bank, okay? And also projected GDP for the, for the demand. So uh, both sides, demand and supply. Projected GDP by the World Bank has recently been revamped to account for COVID-19 impact. So what you see right here has already been refreshed for post-pandemic, okay? So let's, let's have a look at this particular tool. So export potential map identify products, markets, and suppliers with export potential. And you will see that how much of this potential is unrealized. Export potential map draws on economic model that uh, relies on trade, tariffs, GDP, and geographical data. It's a very user-friendly interface with customizable, downloadable, and shareable visualization. Um, it covers 226 countries and territory uh, or 4,000 plus products group based on six-digit level of harmonized system classification. The reason why there are fewer products then trade map, which was 5,300, is because we do not cover the products that are waste, uh, are pollutant, arms, ammunition, tobacco, extractive industry that cannot be produced, such um, products that cannot be produced, for example, antiques. You cannot, re you cannot produce antiques, so that has also been excluded, or products that are irrelevant uh, 
that are relevant irrelevant for market intelligence for example certain products such as gold is purely speculative it's commodity that is being traded on the stock exchange etc so market intelligence is a little bit irrelevant for those products so they are excluded so that's why we are left with 4000 plus product uh, merged into 16 sectors and 73 subsectors so export potential map fits perfectly into the suite of ITC market analysis tool because it takes um, the trade flow from trade map um, and then it takes a tariff from market access map. Other than that, it also consider other elements such as uh, GDP, uh, gross domestic product. It talks about, it consider geographic uh, components such as land endowment, sea access, distances, also price elasticity, etc. cetera. Um, so all of these, just imagine is different ingredients that are put into a glass and then you come up with something that is very forward looking and innovative. Okay, so let's have a look at how we can use this. It's very simple to use. First of all, you, you decide what is the export potential for and you just type in either a product name or a country. Okay, in our case, what we're going to do is we're going to be typing in the um, product name, Cocoa. I automatically see that there's always a key result for you to, uh, to read um, in Export Potential Map. Um, it's, that's why I said it's very intuitive and very easy to use because they always provide you a set of uh, key finding for you to read already. And what we see is that for all the countries around the world, the untapped export potential for cocoa beans sits around 6.2 billion US dollars. Okay, so now we have an overview. For every country around the world, the total untapped export potential is actually 6.2 billion US dollars. So I want to know in which market lies this export potential. So I click on explore market. Voila, and then you have this right now in geo map, but then I'm going to switch to gap chart for better to, to be clearer. I can see that um, for any exporters around the world, these are the market with the highest potential. You have the key finding right here that the market with the greatest potential for cocoa beans are Netherlands, Germany, United States of America. Netherlands showed the largest absolute between potential and actual export in value terms. So you see right here. If you browse over, it will give you the information. The export potential um, the export potential is 3.3 and anti potential is 1.1 billion US dollars. Now, before I go further, I would like to go back um, to, the, to the beginning. So I would like to change my apology for changing this at last minute, but I thought I should resume my role as the Trinidad and Tobago exporter of cocoa beans. So what I would do is I click I type in my country's name and then I explore the product that Trinidad and Tobago actually have the highest, uh, the highest potential. So I see right here. These are, if you browse over, these are the product that they actually, Trinidad and Tobago actually have the highest potential. So you see that is lying in methyl and ammonia, etc., but also ferrous product, cereals with grain preparation of food from roasting cereals, etc. But what I'm most interested in is cocoa. Okay, not a problem. In the world, let's see. My apology again for this. Excuse me, I'm going to try to do this one more time. 
cocoa beans. Explore the exporter. Okay, if I'm going to resume to only Caribbean country here. I see that um, these are the export potential of, of cocoa beans from the Caribbean country. This is obviously dominated by Dominican Republic and other small nations. Maybe we'd be able to see better from here. I remove here and I have the first country with the biggest export potential is actually Dominican Republic. Untapped potential, 89.6 million US dollars. This is followed by another country, Dominica, Haiti, uh, Granada, Trinidad and Tobago. This is my country export potential in cocoa. So I still have untapped potential of 1.1 million US dollars and I want to see in which market that is possible since I'm the exporter from Trinidad and Tobago. And what I see right here, let's read the key findings. The market with the highest export potential for Trinidad and Tobago is actually Netherlands, United States, and Germany. This is projected for the next five years by 2024. Um, you can also browse over here and you will have additional information. For Netherlands itself, you see that the export potential per year is by 2024 is actually 476 a uh, thousand, but the actual export is 400,000. So this leaves the room of 76,000 US dollars. And one often ask, why is there the difference? What can we do to um, realize this untapped export potential? Because what we're discussing right here is the potential and at, uh, uh, at which proportion is actually untapped. So there are a few reasons is because perhaps that um, non-tariff measures that are affecting the particular exporters such as Trinidad and Tobago are not being addressed. So that means they are not able to meet their uh, export potential and that set them back. There's a um, lack of price and quality positioning. I can use perhaps ex um, Dominican Republic as a very, very good example for this because Dominican Republic and its government has been working very hard to put the status, uh, fine, uh, fine cocoa status on its cocoa. So if the government does not step in in order to um, promote the quality or do the relevant marketing for their product, they might not be in line with the market demands. For example, if we see that the European market is going for more traceable origin, more certified uh, cocoa beans, et cetera, but if there's no activities that is helping the exporter to meet those requirements, that is also why they are not able to realize untapped opportunities, et cetera. And there's also the lack of market in the possible lack of market intelligence or business contact. And this is why ITC's market analysis tools are stepping in. Um, and then, of course, there are other frictions that affect the exporter ability to export specific product to a specific market. So that's why this is what we call the untapped export potential. So if I, I, I were um, Trinidad and Tobago exporter of cocoa beans, I can see that I have export potential in Netherlands and I have export potential in the US. So you will see that in terms of export potential, even though Netherlands export potential is higher than that of the US here, 476, this one is 446. What it actually export to Netherlands right now is way higher than what is actually exporting to the US. This means the US, you have much higher untapped potential than the Netherlands, okay, et cetera. This is why the gap of the, gap, the chart between the button and the bar is extremely large because there's a lot of untapped export potential. Then you have the third type of the graphs, which is the, the button actually moved to the right-hand side, and there's a dotted line bar line here. 
This means that um, Trinidad and Tobago already exceeded the export potential. So the export potential that we calculated arrived at 370,000 US dollars, but the actual export is actually 410,000 US dollars. So Trinidad and Tobago actually performed much better than our expectation in Germany. So that's why um, the line is dotted like this. And this is the same case with um, Trinidad and Tobago export to Switzerland. You perform better than our uh, expectation. So that's why the, the export potential, uh, the line is dotted, but it doesn't mean that you should stop exporting to those markets. It just means that you would perform much better than uh, what we expected, and this is great. You must have done something right in those markets. That's why you are able to exceed the export uh, potential. Also in, J in Japan, where the economic model shows you 26,000 uh, US dollars, but your actual export is actually half a million. So it's something that you're doing very well. Some Maybe it's about supplier um, and buyer relations that uh, certain exporters have managed to establish, etc. So that's why the export to those countries is so much higher than what we could predict it. But export potential map, what is actually important is the it's project the trend over the next five years and it allows policymakers or a trade support institution to prioritize the export to certain market where uh, unrealized potential is quite large. Now, I have a question from Risha. Um, Risha said, what does untapped potential mean? 1.1 billion is waiting to be spent. Um, it actually means that you could realize additional 1.1 billion US dollars in trade. Okay. So for example, this one, what does it mean? Untapped potential remaining 76.3 thousand US dollars. It means that as an exporter from Trinidad and Tobago, I could realize additional 76,000 US dollars in export to the Netherlands annually by 2024. This is the room that I could go further because right now, per year, I export 400,000. I could add 76,000 on top of that 400,000. When, when we talk about untapped is what you can add on top of the current or actual export. This is what it means. Okay. Um, I'm sorry that I was uh, that um, there was a hiccup earlier, but I would be welcome. I I would welcome any question that you have on export potential map that you have. So, for example, if I go back to um, I just want to show an other um, country perspective as well for export potential map. For example, if I type in the country Barbados, it automatically tell me that by 2024, Barbados could realize additional 173.9 million US dollars additional export, okay? And the next question that the tool asks is that you want to know in which product this export potential lies or in which market. So I, if I'm interested in which product Barbados could realize additional export, I click on product and automatically it shows you this graph. And this tree, tree map showed that, um, for example, the biggest export potential for Barbados is actually in artificial parts of the body. So you see that there's a darker uh, area and the lighter area. The lighter area represents the untapped export potential. So this means what you see here is that, is that untapped potential is actually larger than actual exports. So they can almost, they could double it, okay, by uh, 2024 per year. Also, you see that there's export potential in rum, there's export potential in liquor, there's export potential in sweet biscuits, there's export potential in medicament. Um, so basically, 
in terms of country perspective, export potential map could help trade support um, institution prioritize which sector uh, they could focus on because resources sometimes could be scarce and they have to be spent in the most efficient way. So export potential map helps you identify the most uh the most promising product for the future in the next five years so this is you have country perspective of course and then you have the product perspective like i show you before cocoa beans you see the cocoa beans the total export potential is actually uh 6.2 and the market that seems to have the biggest potential is actually netherlands followed by germany united states and all these countries right here so they could become your your market it's the same approach as trade map but forward looking you look at the attractive markets these we're talking about in the future etc it's exactly the same uh, structure as trade maps. So basically attractive market and you can uh, see who are your competitors, etc. Now, any other question? If there's no additional question, I would like to move on to the part about market requirements, if you don't mind. I will, uh, well, even though I move on to market access map, if you have any question, you can, um, write your question and then i will come back and address it later but i just want to move because we have four tools in total so the next tool would be market access map and we're back to our um scenario of uh, being an exporter from trinidad and tobago and my destination country will be in belgium so i want to know what kind of tariffs i face and what kind of um market access market access condition i also have to face okay now so i type in my country's name and then the target market which is belgium my product code cocoa beans i click search directly from the home page what i will be able to see is that first of all the custom tariffs is zero percent to export your cocoa beans to Belgium, the importer, which is in most cases, tariffs are paid by importers is 0%. If MFN duties is 0%, but bear in mind that because it's MFN duties, it means that if Belgium extended to one country, it, MFN duty, it means extended to everyone. So any country who want to export cocoa beans to Belgium, will receive zero percent tariffs which is great right which sounds great but even though it's zero for you but it's also zero for other country so that means in terms of tariffs you don't have any tariffs advantage over other competitors and another thing that i would like to discuss is that when it's zero percent tariffs like this sometimes what happened is that the buyers they ask for certificate of origin anyway now what is certificate of origin certificate of origin is the proof of economic nationality of your product is your product really from trinidad and tobago etc so you have to get this perhaps from the chamber of commerce etc to prove your product so it could be the requirement by the buyers but at the very basic level your product can enter the country zero percent tariffs no documentation is required unless it's directly asked by the buyer so in case the buyer asks this is something additional that you have to do but in principle is zero percent tariffs however what i feel that most of the time is not the tariffs that worries people because tariffs if it's uh if the information is available you know how what is the percentage uh that will be what is the percentage that will be applied to your product what kind of tariffs will be applied to your product it's not a problem most of the time the problems come from the uh non-tariff measures or regulatory requirements these are the requirements that are uh, legally binding so that means just because you have the cocoa beans to export doesn't mean that you can just ship it out of the country and it will be will arrive and be accepted 
um, by the by the country. There are other requirements that you need to meet. For example, here in trade map, you are able to see that for the cocoa beans to be accepted into the Belgium uh, market, there will be five requirements that you need to meet. Okay, geographical restriction, uh, special authorization requirement for SPS reason, tolerance limit for residue or contaminant. Um, by certain substances. So this is very, very important because it seems to be that um, there are, you have to meet the minimum of the minimum residue level requirements. For example, um, this is the legal limits for food contaminants such as pesticide. Uh, this is very important so that the product is saved for the consumer, etc. Ocratoxin, this is especially relevant for cocoa. So that means that the level of ocratoxin is not too high to be consumed. Other microbiological contamination, um, heavy metals. The, this is especially relevant for, especially in recent year about cadmium because uh, cocoa from some Latin America and Caribbean country might have um, high cadmium in their soil because of volcanic activities and forest fire. So this is extremely important uh, for you to meet. And some of these you have to prove before you export your product. That means you have to get your product tested that there is a, a good level of, um, there's not too high level of um, uh, pesticide, for example, that it will be acceptable level that the product does not contain um, high level of ocratoxin, et cetera. So these are um, non-tariff measures that are imposed by Belgium to the incoming product. However, what happened as well, as even sometimes non-tariff measures actually happen at home because uh, some country actually put some uh, conditions for you before you even export the product and the country actually have incentives to do so because they want to prevent reputation damage or non-compliance that could result in um, uh, the product being reported in the rapid alert system for food and feed. So once you are reported into the system and if it's repeated several times, uh, the country could be banned from exporting that product to the European market. So even the, your country itself, it has an incentive to impose some non-tariff measure, some sort of quality control before the product even leave the country. So the, so the market requirements does not only happen in the target market, but it actually happens at home. Um, however, in market access map, it only provides you the information for the uh, for the importer side, not the one at home at this point. Okay, so this is um, this is clear, and I would like to go back to market access map. You will see that um, in market access map, there are four modules in total. The first one is access, compare, analyze, and download. So these two particular module, analyze and download, are actually relevant for a researcher because it's about downloading big data and do some analysis, etc. So for in terms of if you're a, a company, exporter, importer, access and compare is largely sufficient for you to use. Now, on top of this, I would like to inform you about the COVID-19 page. Um, basically, COVID-19 page is the page where we track the new product requirements or market procedures that are in place because of COVID-19 situation. For example, this is particularly relevant um, for the exporter of medica medical equipment, et cetera, because there could be some bans, the uh, exporter of uh, alcohol to make disinfectants, for example, because th there might be quota, there might be a uh, ban of exporting. Uh, at one point, for example, countries like Thailand uh, were banning any export of eggs. So at that time, it was particularly um, relevant because you are able to track some sort of uh, restrictive measures that are put in place because of COVID-19. 
Um, but for this uh, example of uh, Trinidad and Tobago exporter to Belgium, we will not uh, have to look at COVID-19. But what we can do is that we could go to the compare module and then we can go and look at compare market right here. Okay. I click on market and I will have to go on the combo box. I'm exporting from Trinidad and Tobago. My destination market, you keep it at all, and then you type your product 1A0100. Then you click search. One of the things that will happen is that you can see the data. First of all, they will present it to you in table, but what you can also see is see it in a map because it's a much easier way to visualize your information. And you can even put the secondary uh, indicators. So I'm going to put the number of non tariff measures because I want to know in terms of the tariffs, one for sure. And second of all, I want to know about non tariff measures. Okay, so the bubble is actually talking about the non tariff measures. So the bigger the bubbles, the more, num the higher number of non tariff measures. And then this is the average tariffs that are available. So the darker color, the more the higher the tariffs will be applied to your cocoa bean. So you can see that, for example, it would not uh, be the most e uh, efficient to export to the country like India maybe, because the applied tariffs for, their, for cocoa beans over there is uh, 30%. 30, 30%. So unless with the under a specific trade agreement, maybe it's not the product to um, cocoa bean would not be able to enter uh, India uh, tariff free, quota free. Okay, so level of openness of the market is not as open as other country. As you can see here, I can choose to sell, remove other country. And what I will be left with is the country that applies 0% tariffs for my cocoa beans. So these are all my potential target markets, market access wise. Okay, because they impose zero percent tariffs on my product. They need my product. Okay, so I can export it zero percent tariff free, not a problem. However, now let's have a look at the bubble, which is the number of non tariff measures. I can see here. Um, let's go back and put every country into perspective to, in the combination here. This country is Saudi Arabia, and it appears that Saudi Arabia uh, apply 5% tariffs, which is not too high, it's a uh, okay uh, level of tariffs, but it have 152 non-tariff measures in place that exporter of cocoa beans have to meet those requirements before exporting their cocoa beans to Saudi Arabia. So all of a sudden you see that it becomes extremely costly to export to Saudi Arabia due to the fact that there's so many measures in place that you have to meet and so many possibly many certificates you have to get uh, before exporting to Saudi Arabia. So it become extremely costly. Whereas if you zoom in on Europe, we see right here that our target market, Belgium, non-tariff measures five and tariffs is zero. So that means for you and as an exporter, European market seems to be extremely attractive market due to the fact that it's low tariffs and five, um, five non-tariff measures. Now, five non-tariff measures does not mean that, um, that is that simple because sometimes five non-tariff measures, you also have to look into it. If you talk about, for example, labeling requirements is that um, you have to meet the general food labeling requirement for European Union. That means the label has to be in English. You have to put all this information there, product name, the grade of the cocoa bean, the lot of batch code, um, the country of origin, the net weight in kilograms. So these are one, the, one of the measure is labeling requirements. So you have to meet all of this. And if you, for example, forgot to put the grade of your cocoa beans, that means your product could potentially be rejected. So it's a good thing to know about market access uh, conditions in advance for you to prepare your product and get your product to the market successfully. Okay, so 
yes, tariff is low. Number of um, non-tariff measures is low as well, but you have to investigate it in detail in order to be able to meet those requirements. So any additional information, uh, any additional question you may have? Um, So basically, I can see one of the question is that does the product base have information for recycling material? So um, I'm not sure. Please let me know if I understand your question correctly. But in some country, for example, the European Union, they have um, this is probably not relevant for cocoa beans. But uh, if you were an exporter of beverages, okay, and you cannot export your beverage in the plastic container that uh, have the recyclable content less than 5%. Okay, so this is some, some sort of requirement that are in the packaging that is about the packaging as well. And this is considered a non tariff measures as well. So yes, this kind of requirement about um, in, uh, recycling components, et cetera, will be in the non-tariff measures part of market access map. I'm not sure I understand your question correctly. Please let me know if you're satisfied with my answer. I'll be happy to elaborate further. Okay, so um, be, now since we look at the existing market access condition, market requirements already, I would like to present to you another tool, forward looking tools about market access condition. Um, because EPING, this is a collaboration between World Trade Organization, International Trade Center, and UN BESA. So it's a forward looking in a way, because I have to put you into perspective that, you know, at the World Trade Organization, each country have their own representatives. And every time they change the rules regarding the uh, sanitary, phytosanitary measures, technical barriers to trade, for example, if they want to change and add more requirements in terms of labeling, et cetera, these kind of things, they have to notify WTO first. And they have to give the other countries sufficient time to comment on the new, the new change, the incoming change. Okay, so EPing is where it collects all the notification of these changes. So for example, I already have an account. It's a separate registration system from ITC's market analysis tool. So if you want to create an account, you have to do it again. For example, I log out and when I log in right here, one second, I logged in. What you will see is here. You have my personal details and you have this preferences. So basically, if you're only concerned with the regulatory change for COCOA, you can put it right there, COCOA. You can put the, um, you can put the, the HS code in there so that if there's a notification that concerns those HS code, it automatically notifies you. For example, you can ask to receive an email alert when new notification match your registration on a daily basis, weekly basis, or no emails, okay? And do you want to receive the email alert when the info is added? Yes, no, you can, you can set your preferences, no problem. But what it does is that as soon as a country have a new regulatory requirements, it notifies you. That means as an importer or exporter, or a producer, you are able to anticipate these changes and make adjustment to your production line. Or if you don't agree with the changes at all, you can notify your um, the representative, which is what we call the inquiry point. You can notify them and let them convene and discuss in order to provide a feedback to the country. Maybe they will extend the grace period, etc. So it's all about bringing the private and public sector together and have a dialogue. At the same time, you stay ahead of the game. So this is what EPing, um, what EPing is in general. So I'm going to show you the search notification. Basically, you, you are presented with this page and you have a lot of products 
and a lot of um, information that are available here, but I'm only concerned about the cocoa, cocoa beans in particular. We only talk about this particular product today. So all I keep it all members. Um, product, I am going to type cocoa. And all of a sudden, I'm presented with the latest notification. What I see here is this one, Canada. It say a proposed maximum residue limit. Okay, so there's gonna be change. You can click and read about it. So basically this particular product, the, min, uh, the maximum residue limit, MRL, will be changed for different no cosa no sol. So this is this is a pesticide. So it's changing the maximum residue limits that is available that that is for the, for for the particular um, in different products. For example, it talks about the teas, the wild rice, the guava, papayas. Cocoa is obviously implicated. That's why it's written in here. And of course, obviously, if you're the producer of cocoa beans, cocoa tree, you want to make sure that actually you're not putting this particular pesticide into your, your production or growing of the cocoa, cocoa beans, because otherwise the product could be rejected by Canada if this, um, this regulatory change come to um, be enforced. Then, for example, the next question, the next one is also for Brazil. Brazil, this has been notified on the 18th of, Oct of August. So they said establish the phytosanitary requirements for the import of fermented dry cocoa bean from Ghana. So if they found, for example, like I mentioned before, if the product leaves the country and they are and the importing country is able to find um, contaminants, they could put regulatory requirements specifically for another country. It's like this one, Brazil is putting additional regulatory requirements for Ghana because they probably found a contaminant in the fermented dry uh, cocoa bean, etc. So this has been notified to WTO. And um, if there's no uh, objection for other country, obviously this one will go into effect. And this means that the producer of cocoa bean or exporter of cocoa beans from Ghana, if they did not were not aware about this before, their product could be rejected. So that's why it's important to um, gather as much information before making export decision. Now, um, I am actually quite on time in terms of my 90 minute limit. I was wondering if there is any additional question from the audience. I am going through all the question. I see that Han has been very efficient in answering your question, but if you have any additional question, I'll be very happy to um, answer your question right now about any tools. We can go back to trade map, we can go back to market access map, we can go back to export potential map, we can go back to eping as well to have a look at other products. Um, another thing that I would like to mention is that we have additional webinars coming for setup partner um, another one is tomorrow on alcoholic beverages um, where we'll also discuss this food for tools so i'm very happy um, to be a part of this yes i have re i have received an email for um i don't know um, a message from the floor um, Alana has asked if I could please repeat the factors affecting untapped potential. Okay, so the first one. The first one is non-tariff measures. So if even though you have existing trade agreements, et cetera, which makes it uh, make which make ease of trade high for your country. But if your if your export 
exporter or producer are unable to meet the non-tariff measures that are affecting their capacity to export, that results in the untapped uh, export potential. This is one. No? So basically, Alana, if you think, for example, bar, um, bar, uh, for example, Trinidad and Tobago have extremely uh, good potential in, let's say, the Netherlands market or the Belgian market. Okay, it even have uh, economic partnership agreements that it can export their zero percent tariffs, etc. And MSN duty is also zero. In theory, this sounds like there's a lot of potential and they should be cap able to capture all the potential, right? But they cannot. This is because one, potentially because they cannot meet those five non-tariff measures. That's why they cannot fully realize their potential. This is second, perhaps some exporter are not meeting uh, the, the quality that is demanded by the Belgian uh, consumers. So for example, there's a there's an area where there's co there could be potentially collaboration between trade promotion organization in terms of um, with the marketing, etc. Or quality positioning. I mentioned before about Dominican Republic, how it's very very strong in terms of promoting Dominican origin uh, chocolate. So even though in theory they should be able to export everything, but because it doesn't meet the preferences of the buying country that's why there's a gap that's a second um that's a second potential factors the third one is the lack of market intelligence i have my product but i don't know what to do there's no one to tell me how many certificates i have to get i have to get certificate for maximum residue limit i forgot i i don't know about this i cannot export it i exported it and it come back that's also a, a problem so because there's a lack of, mar of um, information, they might not be able to meet to capture those uh, potential. So those are the factor. I have another question from Risha. She um, Risha has asked, could you go? Can you go through Eping? Thanks. So um, Eping basically very simple search. Huh? So Eping when you arrive on the page, it looks like this. Even if you don't register, you will be able to use the search notification function. However, but if you do register and have an account, that means you will receive notification in the future. So basically, it's very simple. You click on search notification, type any product name that you have. I did for Cocoa, but if I have other products, for example, rice, then I type and then I and then I would have, for example, um, notification, the latest one from Chinese Taipei um, on the 9th of September 2020. So it, it lists all this product that falls into this upcoming market uh, requirements. And this market requirement is about infectious animal disease. So basically they want to control to make sure that all the food uh, products that enter the country does not have uh, disease, is disease free, which is understandably under the, within the what's going on in the world right now. So they create additional um, market requirements. So perhaps what happened is that you have to provide a certificate uh of good health for your animal product or food product etc so that's that's why it's there eping is very simple right here you get the notification straight away you even have the link to the full text because don't forget this is used by all wto uh members etc here so basically what it does is that it requires additional certificate that the animals or the food is free from all those disease right here. So additional steps for, um, for how do you say, for exporter, additional certificate that they have to do. So that's why um, sometimes non-tariff measures, it looks like it's five only, but what it implies is that you have to get all kinds of certificates and it could take days, it could take money to get the certificate. So, that's why 
tariffs has become increasingly less important, whereas non-tariff measures has become increasingly more and more important. Michael asks, can you please set back the Barbados potential for export? Certainly. So here is the home of export potential map. You have two options, country perspective or product perspective. You want to see the export potential of Barbados, you type your country's name. Automatically, it tells you that you could realize additional 173.9 million on top of what your actual exports are. Okay, on top of it, you could realize additional 173 million. Then it asks you a question, do you want to see the products or you want to see the market? I want to see the product. I click on the product, it's showing the tree map. At this point, it's set at the top 50 products. So if you browse over, these are all the top 50 products that Barbados have export potential. The dark part is the actual export. The lighter part is the untapped potential. So it's very simple. You, you saw, Michael, that I just did literally two clicks and I got here, okay? And there are different ways of seeing this. You can see when tree map, like what we're looking right now, or you want to see gap chart. So it will become the bar, like I told you before, and you are able to better read the description right here. Now, I will repeat one more time that for this particular gap chart, what it means when the button is on the left and the bar is on the right, this is the available untapped potential. There's still untapped potential. When it's the dotted line like this, it means your country already exceeded our expectation. So in this case, Barbados has already exceeded our expectation in terms of their rum export, in terms of their Portland cement export, uh, in terms of medicament export and insecticide export. However, there are other products that they still have export potential, which means that as a trade promotion uh, officer, I could help, um, these are the products that I could help the exporter realize those um, mysterious untapped potential right here. Cargo, sweet biscuit, for example. If I want, if um, then, if you want to see in which market actually my Barbadian, Barbadian, Barbadian sweet biscuit actually have potential, I can click on market. So here it says, for this product, find market. Okay. And it appears that um, Barbados sweet biscuits have the highest potential in Guyana. It already exceeded expectation in Jamaica, and then it still have almost half a million US dollars of untapped potential in the United States for sweet biscuits. So play around with it. Like I mentioned before, today is basically just an appetizer for uh for you it's an introduction to itc's market analysis tool it's just to show you that the tools exist and these tools have many many powerful features and functionality that um that you should uh, take time to explore we have also video tutorials available on our youtube channel for our different tools for for example here we have trade map video tutorials. We have export potential map video tutorials. We have um, market access map video tutorials. Um, I know you speak English, but um, we also have it in uh, many languages. We have it in French, Spanish, Russian, and even Burmese late recently. So please do visit our YouTube channel for video tutorials on the tools where it's really um, features and specific and help you better understand the tools and if you have any question you can always write an email to us if you scroll down to any page you have our email address right here market analysis at interesting.org um, you submit your inquiry and normally we reply to you within 48 hours except uh, weekend of course um, if there's no more question. I would like to wrap up this session. 
and I thank you again for your patience. I thank you for joining us on this trailblazing webinars, and I look forward to continue working with the Caribbean Export Development Agency in assisting you and providing you the relevant market intelligence uh, for your analysis and to help your export um, better, export more to the markets around the world. Okay, so is there anything that the organizer would like to say before we, we close the session? Uh, hi, Pachaya. Thank you so much. Um, thank you for this rich and engaging presentation. And thank you to Hannah as well for responding to the questions in the chat box. I'm sure we can all agree that this was a very useful inter introduction to the suite of ITC tools. Um, we encourage the participants to check out the site, um, play around with the tools. We will post the recording in due course on our webinar page. So participants are encouraged to check out caribbeanexport.com forward slash webinars, where this session and past webinars um, are hosted. As Pichaya mentioned, we also have two more sessions. Tomorrow's session will look at alcoholic beverages and the session on the 30th of September will look at sauces and condiments. Um, we know that it's been very well subscribed, so um, there might be a few spots left, but rest assured, um, hopefully next year when things calm down, we can have some in-person in sessions. That was the ultimate aim, but um, COVID, of course, threw us a curveball. So we're trying as best as possible to provide you with the information in, in, um, in the time being. Finally, we asked uh, the participants to spend a few minutes completing our feedback survey. It will be launched immediately after the session ends on the platform. Um, it will also be sent in a follow-up email um, that you will receive a few hours from now together with the recording. So again, thank you everyone for your attention and we look forward to hosting you again in the future. Have a good rest of the day. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Take care.